right before we left for Ethiopia, there was a video that came out out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it was a store named June's Beauty Supply. Now, the Asian business owner ended up punching the black woman in her mouth. She was bleeding. This video went viral, even international in a lot of ways. People saw this. So I want you to hear the woman herself talk about what happened. And I want you to kind of see the aftermath of that punch because there's another video came out that we really about to go in on. Um, I'm nervous, but um, I was up, I came to shop here. I did purchase items and I had my young son, he's three years old. And um, I was attempt, I paid for my stuff and was attempting to walk out. I hadn't got all the way outside yet. And my son had a little 99 cent uh, keychain that he had picked up and uh, the man, the owner, he said something to me. I took it from my son and I threw it back in the store. I just threw it down because I was trying to discipline my son at the same time. And so we we turned on and walked on out the store. I thought it was all done. And next thing I know, he was just right behind me and I'm probably about right here and I'm walking out and um, he's behind me saying something in his language, I don't know, but it was aggressive. And so um, I turned around to say something verbally back to him, and then I went ahead and, uh, no, that's not him. <laughs> and then I went ahead and um, got up in his face, as y'all can probably see on the video, and then I uh, attempted to walk away. It looks like I hit him, but I didn't. I just turned around and say, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm walking yeah. away. Yeah. And as I walked away, he grabbed my arm and spit me around. And then he just hit me in my mouth. And as you can see. As, as you can see. And then that was all. And he walked on back in the building. And I sat out well, for about an hour. Yeah. yeah, shaking his hand because he obviously hurt his hand. And um, and then I just sat out here and waited on the ambulance and waited on the police. And I, I went to the hospital and I got three stitches in my lip. Wow. And, um, and so that's basically what what really actually happened. And um, nothing was ever taken from the store. Not, I never got out the store with anything. And, um, you know, that's just basically what happened. And he was not arrested. And he was not arrested. And the police was here. The police came and to the they, scene. what was their reasoning for not arresting him? Um, there, they really haven't gave me a reason. I, I was, um, I left in the ambulance, so I never talked to the police while I was here, but the police was here. They did, uh, they acted like they was arresting him because they had him in handcuffs. And, um, but they didn't arrest him because the police did come to the hospital and they said that he would have been released in an hour. And I said, and so they just didn't do it. So as you saw that this guy caused stitches, in his sister's mouth when he punched her. Now, many times, and I have said this even on my platform, many others have said this and say, where are the black men? Are they going to stand up? Are they going to say something? Uh, black men is the line of defense uh, for the sisters. It's been said that so many times, right? So you have some brothers that's still out there protesting in the midst of this next video we're going to show you against this Asian beauty supply store. Now we've seen so many of these beauty supply store videos where uh, the Asian business owners are whipping black women's behinds. They beating them with sticks. They punching them, they kicking them. They throwing acetone in their face. They doing everything they can. They choking them out all kind of ways. They have abused them and they still go right back. Now this business owner, even though you know, he caused stitches in his sister's mouth, he says, Hey, I'm gonna give 50% off of everything in the store. Now, if people had like dignity and self-respect for themselves, it wouldn't matter what he offers, but oh no. Um, we have the same people who are getting beat up in these stores. I want you to watch what happened in this next video. Yeah, looks like the way they're doing it is they're only letting certain people, um, a certain number of people uh, in the store and um, yeah, there's a long line. There's more. There's more people. There's more ladies out there looking for the 50% sale than um, protesters. 
So um, basically, we're not on them. like five protesters and we're outnumbered. <laughs> yeah. What's in this particular video is just sickening to the core. Sick. We as a people allow certain individuals to run around unchecked. Now we talk about Pookie and Ray Ray all the time. Pookie and Ray Ray does this, Pookie and Ray Ray does that, right? Everybody know about Pookie and Ray Ray. And it's acceptable to talk about Pookie and Ray Ray and what they do, and they should be talked about. But when you have little hood rat females, like in this video that you saw, we can't talk about them because the reason we can't talk about them, because unfortunately a lot of them are in some of our families. A lot of them could be our mothers. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm going there today. So we can't talk about the hood rat females. Now you have the hood rats and you have the hood rat sympathizers because I had mentioned that hood rats have no loyalty to the black community at all. I had a black woman and I checked her page. I wouldn't label her a hood rat at all. She says, well, Phil, do you have to call her that? Um, you're better than that. I said, I'm not better than nothing. I'm not better than nobody in my community. I am at the lowest of the low. And that's why I keep myself at not the lowest of the low, how I feel about myself, but I'm not above nobody period. So don't tell me I'm above something. I'm not above a thing. If I sit up there and talk about racism and white supremacy and say everything I say about them, I am no respecter of persons. I will sit there and call every, anybody out. I don't care. And yes, we have a right in black media to call out black folks who are doing things that are anti-black, who are doing things to hurt black progress. Yes, I, we have to call it out. White folks can't call it out because they have no place to, and they should keep themselves out of our business. We have to call that out, but we have those females being allowed to run around and destroy the black community too. Not just Pookie and Ray Ray, because females like that in that video 
what you saw having these kids uh oh all over the place no fathers running around when, you, when a brother see her son trying to get involved with pookie and ray ray and then he steps in and say hey hey hey, hey go go in the house and stay away from them that same kind of female will come out and say what the f are you telling my son something for he could be outside he could do that, that same kind of female right there now you telling the black man to stand up and, and, and fight, but then you have that female coming over there and, and screaming and yelling and acting like a, a, a crazy woman. And she's allowed to get away with that mess because we don't check her either. We don't check her. Now, who created her, I'm gonna talk about that too. Lyndon Johnson, he created that. He created what you see because that female right there was created when Lyndon Johnson come up with this welfare and this food stamp situation that it came on. Because prior to all that welfare and food stamp, we didn't have that in our community. We didn't have Pookie and Ray Ray either. Because oh, you didn't have time for that because you had to work. You had to create businesses in our community. We had to stick together as a family unit. And see, that Democratic Party that brought in that welfare and food stamps, it has decimated black folks. You look at 50 years later, and that's why I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish Trump come up and just cut that mess off. I wish he would, but he ain't going to do it because he got more of his people on that system than black folks are. But I don't care what they do. I'm talking about what we do. They have this entitlement that they don't have to uh, side with the black community because white daddy gives them a place to stay. White daddy gives them a food stamp card every 30 days. They don't have to worry about the black community. This is why in that same uh, uh, other video, the red apple nail salon in Brooklyn, you got black people out there protesting. And then they have the same kind of females that ran up to that brother sitting inside that same nail salon after some other black women got their behind whip in their acetone thrown in the face, broomsticks beating your behind, and you're gonna sit yourself right back inside their nail salon and get your nails done. They got black women who have beauty supply stores, black women that have nail shops. They don't even wanna support other black women. They refuse to support other black women because they don't like black women either. They rather sit up there and give their money to, to someone that's whipping their butt. Now, Dr. Amos Wilson said this, he said, black people have staged the greatest boycott in history. And the boycott is against black owned businesses. You won't shop there. You will go around black people. This is what you do. You boycott your own. Every other group shop with their people, do business with their people, but you, hell no. You rather go over there and get your behind whip. You rather get stitches in your mouth. This is what you rather do. No self-respect. 50% off, that's your self-respect. Putting fakeness in your head, that's self-respect for you. Like that man not selling oxygen to you, he not selling you food, he not selling you nothing that it's essential to live, but you feel these products and this man is selling you cheap products at that, this is what you need to do. This man has a history of not only punching women in the face, he has mace women, he has tased women, and yet y'all still go back to this man's uh, beauty supply store. Now, this is my thing. When do we stop complaining about them and start saying us? When? This man gets away with it because y'all, and I can't say black men, y'all keep going back to that man's store. You know his history, you know what he do, and you still go back to the store. Black people standing up for you, you're cussing them out, you're ready to fight. I'm at a point with these Asian beauty supply stores or nail salon videos or whatever, I'm at a point I, I don't even wanna talk about them no more. Because like this, you love it. You love getting your behind whipped. You love getting your behind put in choke holes. You love it. Obviously, because if you didn't love it, you wouldn't go over there. I don't understand that. You, like I said, we as a community of people in this country, black folks, we are about done. We are, we are, we are literally done. It's only a few of us that's holding on. It's a few of us that's keeping the community just on life support. It's only a few. Because the rest of them, this individual mentality that you have, well, what they got to do with me? What they got to do with me? Every other race see it too. Every other group see your dysfunction. Every other group see that you could get abused and you don't care, you will take it. But, but see, see how she reacted to that black man? 
She won't go back to that Asian man like that, and he'll be whipping her butt. But sitting up here, she ready to go and fight a black man. Ready to fight. A black man is trying to stand up for her. See, it couldn't have been me. Because if she would have came up to me like that, I'd say, you know what? <laughs> Check this out. I'm about to, I'm like, hey, man, I'm gone, man. I, I, I can't. I am not going to do I am not going to defend that. No. Because of that kind of female going inside the store, not controlling her child, etc. You know, any other black woman that say do walk in there. Now he's looking at all of them the same way. But once again, they don't want to shop with black women. They don't want to support black women. That needs to be talked about. Now, if they will super cop up all together against these people who's abusing them and shut them down, then they could do that. But the moment some black male celebrity talk about dating a white woman, they ready to, to get rid of his career, get rid of whatever. No, I'm not supporting black men doing that. I'm just saying the reaction. They're so quick to super cop up on things like that. But with this abuse, they're not quick to super cop up because that, that hair and whatever else they're putting in their head is more important than their dignity and, and, and their self-respect. So what is it for us to keep making videos for about what happens with these Asian uh, owners? Why are we making videos about it? Think about that. Why? They keep going back year after year after year for the abuse. Why? They got black people that do nails. They got black people that sell beauty supply products. And if you can't find one, do some research on Google. Stop asking people like me and other content creators. Well, where are they at? Do some research. You got a phone. We can't do everything for you. I don't care if you get mad that I say that. Come on now, have some responsibility. Look up for the people in your city, in your state. Support other black people that's doing this. And I ain't been to no restaurant or, or business where black people are trying to whip up on me. Of course, like I said, they're not whipping up on black men, these, these Asian owners. They're not doing that. They're doing it to, to, to black women. But I guess the nails they do and the, the pedicures and the beauty supply stores, I guess that's important to you to get your butt whipped. So it's, I guess it's a necessary sacrifice. Come on, man. This is indicative to the overall problems in our community. It really is. This is why you can't fight racism, white supremacy is because you, you value, uh, uh nails and, 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 and pedicures and, and synthetic hair at that more than you value yourself. But you know, even though I'm saying all this, I'm gonna have some women that get upset with me. Oh, Phil, I can't believe you saying that. It's called tough love. Yes, I'm gonna say that. And if you have an issue with what I'm saying, then you need to check yourself because I'm speaking for the betterment of my community, male and female. This is not nothing that needs to be going on. We have, you know, these white supremacists out here stabbing people in the neck uh, coordinating attacks against black people. And this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Fighting against the people that's trying to stand up for you. Fighting against black men that's trying to stand up. It's sad. It is utterly sad. And you need the women, the women. And yes, I've seen a few women, actually a lot of women calling this video out and that's great. They need to do so. But women are going to have to check this. They're going to have to check those hood rats. They're going to have to check this behavior. They're going to have to check it because it's, it's way out of line. It's way out of line. And those females right there will be the main ones to sell out the black community. Because remember, white daddy provides her in everything. She don't have to work. Like I say, y'all bet, boy, y'all would want me to be the president of the United States. Because I tell you what, if I had to be the president of the United States, I don't care if you hate me. Because that, that being a 5, 10 year, 15, 20 year welfare recipient stuff, I don't care what color you are, that will end. That will end right then and there. Because we, how are you going to sit up here and, and pay for people who able bodied and go their behinds to work? How are you going to sit up there and pay for that crap for a taxpayer? Welfare and food stamps should only be for the elderly, the disabled, uh, veterans, you know, children. But then when it comes to children, their parents can't just sit around and not work. You should only be on the system 18 months. After 18 months, we need to really evaluate what you got going on. It's just that simple. I didn't grow up uh, on no welfare and food stamps. And I grew up poor. 
You know why? Because I asked about that. Like, well, why can't we get like that free food like people get? You know what I was told? Because you don't want to depend on white people. That's exactly what I was told. Is that because the moment white folks take it away from you, then what you're going to do? Depend on yourself. Ask God to give you health and strength and do it for yourself. That's why I was told. Because I was raised by black men that had dignity and self-respect. I was raised by black women that had dignity and self-respect in themselves and then go sit up there on the system and want to sit up there thinking that's a life to live and have this entitlement mentality that they got to give me food stamps. They got to give me housing. They got to, they ain't got to give you crap. That was the worst thing that ever happened to black folks outside of desegregation is that because you created a whole class of people that's no earthly good to the black community. But leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this. I know some of you are not liking what I'm saying. I know you love when I talk about white supremacy, but doggone it. We got to talk about us sometime. It's called tough love. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't say nothing about this at all. It's all said in love because when people love you, they chastise you when you're wrong.